Somewhere on chromosome 7, there is a gene that has 6,129 active letters in it. This gene strings together 1,480 amino acids into a protein whose function is to allow salt to penetrate various membranes in the body. Little Susan has a tiny error in that gene in her seventh chromosome. Three letters are missing, and that causes the protein that Susan's genes manufacture to be ever so slightly misshapen. And although the difference in the shape is tiny, the consequences are huge. This particular protein does its work in the linings of the lungs. By inserting itself into the plasma membrane, the protein makes a passageway for the salts to enter and leave the cells. But if the protein is not exactly the right shape, then it cannot transport the plasma membrane and therefore cannot do its job. Then salt gets trapped inside the cell, and that causes the cell surface to become sticky and covered with thick mucus. This results in wheezing, breathlessness, and the persistent cough to expel troublesome mucus. This is cystic fibrosis, and it is the result of just three missing letters on chromosome 7. Perhaps even more tragic is Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs begins at one infinitesimal spot on the DNA ladder when just one letter goes wrong. This mistake comes down to just four atoms. That's it. But the error in that gene creates a problem in this protein, which is supposed to dissolve fatty materials in the brain. But now the protein doesn't work. So fat builds up, swells the brain, and eventually strangles and crushes the critical brain cells. Infants with Tay-Sachs disease appear to develop normally for the first few months of life. Then, as nerve cells become distended with fatty materials, a relentless deterioration of mental and physical abilities occur. The child becomes blind, deaf, and unable to swallow. Muscles begin to atrophy and paralysis sets in. Hard to imagine that just four wrong atoms change just one letter out of three billion. And this is the result. When genetic diseases run through families, then we know the mutations in the genes that cause these diseases are being inherited. Here is an example. In a normal gene, this is the sequence, ending G, T, A, G, C, A, G, T. But sometimes the gene is missing two of the letters. This new configuration is a mutation that can often lead to breast cancer and it is passed from generation to generation, causing the potential for disease to be passed down as well. The US government maintains a website with much of the current information about genes, chromosomes, and proteins. In the section labeled Chromosome Viewer, you can select a chromosome and see how many base pairs or letters are on the chromosome. When you get to the web page for each particular chromosome, you can see a list of traits and disorders associated with genes on that chromosome. Let's enlarge chromosome 7 that we talked about earlier. As you can see, the gene that causes cystic fibrosis is here. On other pages, you can see genetic disease profiles. Here is the cystic fibrosis profile. You can even examine specifics about some genes. Again, this page details genes associated with cystic fibrosis. How can we fix genes that are broken? Gene therapy is a new and promising technology. 
consider a disease like SCID, which is an autoimmune disease caused by a single gene mutation which prevents the body from producing normal disease-fighting cells. These patients have no natural defense and often spend their lives in an isolation bubble to prevent contact with other people. Since bone marrow is the place where cells are made, which normally defend the body, bone marrow is drawn from the patient, and a normal gene is inserted into the patient's DNA, either replacing the faulty gene or coexisting with it. Then these repaired marrow cells are placed back into the patient's body, where they begin to multiply and produce normal disease-fighting cells. Another example of promising gene therapy involves muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is a genetic disorder characterized by insufficient production of a protein called dystrophin. Disease victims' muscles eventually weaken to the point where they cannot survive. Researchers studying dystrophy in rats have successfully used a harmless virus to transmit the missing gene to every muscle of the rat's body reversing the muscle wasting that characterizes the disease. This is a magnified image of the quadriceps muscle of a normal mouse. The dystrophin protein is shown in green and outlines the cells in the muscle. This is a similar image of the mouse victimized by muscular dystrophy. And this remarkable image shows a muscle in that same mouse six weeks after the gene therapy. Protein therapy is similar, but instead of fixing a patient's genes, it is directed at artificially creating the correct form of the misshapen protein and injecting these correctly formed proteins directly into the patient. This may prove to be easier in the short term because we don't have to identify the specific genetic errors that cause the protein to be misshapen in the first place. We only have to supply the proteins that have the correct shape. Scientists have successfully produced a goat that has been genetically modified so that her milk contains a human protein that can be extracted and given to patients who cannot manufacture it themselves. But in addition to curing diseases, we are also developing the skills to choose which of our genes our children will receive. Greg and Marie are about to hear the results of their in vitro fertilization from their genetic counselor. They are about to face the full implications of this emergent technology. Your extracted eggs, Maria, have been genetically matched in vitro with Greg's sperm. Now, you've selected a boy with blue eyes, brown hair, and fair skin. As an adult, he'll be 5 feet, 11 inches tall, and his IQ will be near genius level. Now, I've taken the liberty of eliminating a few undesirable traits, alcoholism, cancer, Alzheimer's, baldness, obesity. Well, I thought, certainly no diseases, but... And we were wondering if we shouldn't leave some characteristics to chance. You want to give your child the best possible start. Remember, this child is still you, simply the best of you. You could conceive naturally a thousand times and still never get such a result. I'll give you a minute to think about it. Should we choose the best that's in us for our children 